My name is Catherine Lyon and I um, was previously a uh, home owner and manager of, of a nursing home where we had a where we specialised really in complex neurological patients. Of the 41 residents that we had when I left, there were 25 with um, Huntington's disease. The previous home that I ran, um, they had 38 residents and of them there was 15 with Huntington's disease. So I've been working with complex neurology up since 1994. Um, I, I was a Parkinson's disease specialist nurse and then um, went on to run these two homes where I encountered and, and, and developed the service for Huntington's disease, particularly with an interest in that. Um, I, I, I left that um, my nursing home uh, five years ago and since then I've been uh, on, a, on the um, executive council for the Huntington's disease association and have been lecturing for them on various um, topics surrounding looking after people with Huntington's disease at end of life, preparing, coping with loss, anticipatory grief, um, and now this so on which is activities. Um, I also um, uh, have been working with the hospice as an end of life doula because I've been working in end of life for a very long time. So uh, um, activities and, and making life nice at, at a time when you are compromised in some ways has been something that I've been talking about for quite a long time. So today we're going to talk about, I'm going to just shut down that little window, people. Um, today we're going to talk about green behaviour and green, green opportunities. And some of you may have come across it before and some of you may not. And I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit, we'll just do a quick thing for you to think about. So I hope you've all got a bit of, of pen and paper there. Um, and I want you to think about what is it in your own life that helps keep you happy and content and write a few things down you know are things that that day to day or week by week that, that just just make us all feel like we're getting somewhere that that everything is working that, um things that bring us joy um and make us feel purposeful um and then I'll, i will list of mine and then we can go from there so just have a few moments to think about that Okay, so I've got mine, happy and content. Uh, my family, I've got a nice big family um, and uh, my kids and my, my father's still alive. And then I've got my sister who I, I adore and I've got some good close friends. My friends, of course, I've got a nice little gang of them. We go out quite a lot and work. What, what, and, and having retired, I found it quite difficult for a while not to have anything to do, which is why I got involved with the um, with the HDA and with the hospice because I needed to feel purposeful and make me make to make me feel happy and contented. Going out for walks, I've got a new puppy. I had a dog before, but she died. I've got a new puppy, and I love taking her out. I love getting out in the in the greenery and uh, feeling healthy and, and keeping moving. And um, hobbies, I, I'm in a choir. Um, and I, I like doing um, uh, um, stuff. My sister's a textile artist, and we like to go out to craft fairs and, and galleries and, um, and things like that. And I love historical trips, et cetera. That keeps me feeling good. Um, I just love listening to the radio. I listen to six music most of the day, or, or music. I sing. Uh, I like go and see live bands, um, and uh, music's very important to me. Uh, I like going to cinema, of course. Everyone likes to do that, and the theatre too. Um, TV and radio, so yeah, you know, everyone winds down to that, don't they? At the end of the day, they watch uh, watch all their favourite shows. Um, food, of course, we all like going out to eat, and I love cooking. I actually, find cooking to be quite meditative. I I love creating big dishes. That's something I would I love doing very much. Um, drinking, socialising, having a nice uh, maybe a, a, a glass of wine to settle down at the end of the day helps me feel relaxed and content. Uh, I, I love a massage and I'll book one regularly. I think it's really important to, uh, to, to have, uh, ha have those kind of things going on. Um, and touch is very important too, to, to anybody to make them feel happy and content. And I put touch in there, um, holding hands and, and feeling important. Sex, of course, <laughs> is the king of indoor sports, an old patient once told me. And I think that um, it's something that uh, we don't talk about enough and we should and it's very important in it certainly in a, in a loving relationship or, um, or an intimate relationship it's a very important part and um, it can become something that becomes challenging and we'll go on to that in a little bit later on um, smoking I don't smoke but some people find that very relaxing my husband is a smoker actually and he um, if he gets stressed he'll go and have a cigarette um, but I, I know that and I'm sure there are a fair few people that you're looking after that that, that maybe find smoking helps them 
Um, and obviously a good night's sleep or rest is something that helps me feel happy and content. So then we had, um, we all went through COVID recently, of course, lockdown, and we lost ability to do some of these things. So now with your list that you've written down, uh, put a line through or scrub out some of the things that you couldn't do during that time um, and 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 see what, what, what we're left with. So I'll put a line through mine or I'll, I'll, I'll snuff them out. So um, I couldn't see my friends. None of us could, could we, unless we bubbled up. But for quite a long period of time, I, I wasn't able to uh, to get out with them. And that was quite challenging. Um, I, none of us could go to work or some were still working, but work was different. And maybe it was a bit of a tense situation, but, but some people had to work from home. My friends worked from home for the last three years now, nearly. And that's put a big, big um, strain on her. Um, going out for walks, although you could do your hourly walk in the beginning, it, it, you know, getting too far, they were chaining up the Morven Hills car parks where I live and all the things that, are, you know, the, the bigger spaces we were denied, it was very difficult. Hobbies, I couldn't go to choir, that, that was shut down and there was no craft fairs, there was no going out to um, the historical places that I like to go. Um, couldn't go to the cinema, um, we couldn't have a massage and maybe even family disappears or um you know certainly when during covid a lot of people couldn't see their family or their loved ones and in nursing homes or or um in in you know getting out and visiting people was very difficult so then we were left with here we are left with as we were in covid and as with the people that that maybe you're looking after you're left with a fair few only a few little things which um, you are in control of, we are in control of. And so when you're looking after somebody who has a complex um, presentation, a complex disability, uh, like Huntington's disease, we often see, and this might be your experience, that they become very fixated on drinking, smoking, eating, watching the telly, sleeping, listening to music or, or playing the radio really loud. And so I've left sex in there. There was a few questions at the beginning um, that were sent through about um, dropping their trousers and sexual inappropriateness and, and, and uh, being sexually um, disinhibited. And I hope that, that this has been able to show you um, that this is these are the things that we alone control. That when all the other things are surrounding us that, that, that are external stimuli, external pleasures, this becomes something that that we will then focus on. And it's something that, that we struggled we struggled with sexual dis disinhibition and sexual inappropriateness in the nursing home environment because this is the, the one thing that, that we can control and it's it's an instant pleasure. And it's something that's within us from from um, uh, you know from childhood really or from early days, and in, in loving normal relationships, it's very very important that makes us feel great. But when people become disabled, it can sometimes be considered or become indecent and embarrassing, and then that person is still having those feelings, so they hold on to that, and that then, as some of you may experience, become a challenge. What I'm going to talk about as we go forward is how these things can be. The, 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 the challenges of these things can be lessened. So if you've got someone who's smoking too much, is drinking too much, is, is compulsive about food, um, sleeping a lot because there's nothing else going on, disinhibited, just watching the TV over and over again, or even shouting to watch the TV whilst watching the TV. I had a, a gentleman ring me up, his wife, why I want to watch Die Hard, I want to watch Die Hard whilst she was watching Die Hard. So the, 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 why is this happening when they're doing what they say they want to do? Why has it become if these are the pleasures why has that become a challenge so if, if we haven't got these things if, if we've only got this left then things can become quite gray our life is no longer green we're doing the same thing it's just a churn over and over and over again and if we are if we can think back to how we felt during co during the coronavirus and the, the lockdown we were feeling lonely we were feeling vulnerable and scared certainly with this big threat over the top of us we were feeling afraid um, anxious um, agoraphobic maybe and some people are still a little bit like that now my certainly my friend is um antisocial we don't want to see anybody we were bored angry frustrated depressed and all of these things make us stressed and stress is the thing that then leads on to um the bigger triggers that i'm going to talk about in a little while and so stressed when, when someone is stressed 
we are not happy and content, we are agitated. We can be disruptive and angry. We can be destructive, slamming doors, doing pushing stuff about. We can be dangerous. And that, that's when a lot of the, the worry, um, if you remember in the beginning of lockdown, the worry was that people would start, that certainly domestic abuse and, and, and problems within the home environment when there's little to do, nothing else going on. And I'm going to expand upon this, but I'm, I'm hoping that you will think about the experience of the person that you're looking after or the person that you love and, and see what, is, what they have lost um, to help you understand why they are displaying or showing the, thing, the, 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 the um, issues that they're showing. And by bringing green opportunities into life, you can remove some of these stresses. So my advice, haha, right. I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a minute just because this is just me talking. Um, so I'm gonna have a drink while I think about it. The purpose of the talk is to discuss and find ways uh, to help those that we love or the people that we're looking after stay happy and prevent stress, okay? So if we talk about, if you talk about activities, if you say to the person that you're looking after, oh, let's go um, to the zoo, um, you're likely to going to get an absolutely big old no straight away because that, because they don't, but you, you, they don't understand what's going to happen next. Um, and it can be, and if you say, if you say, well, today's activity is going to be this and today's activity is going to be that, that can sound prescriptive and patronising. And I can't sit here and tell you how to do that. What, but what, what we, I want to be able to get us to do is to think about the things that we all wanted to do after lockdown was lifted. The way, you know, when lockdown was lifted, we didn't go, right, I'm, I'm off, I'm going to go, oh, climb Kilimanjaro. I'm, I'm not going to do any of these big things. What we wanted to do was see our friends, was maybe have our hair cut um, and coloured, um, maybe, uh, you know, get our eyebrows done. The personal things, careful, th you know, things that, that that made us feel good about ourselves. We wanted to go to, out, out and meet friends for coffee. We wanted to walk around Tesco's without wearing a mask. We wanted to do simple, basic stuff. The people that we're looking after very often are starting from that place of stress, that they've lost all of those things that we talked about in the beginning. They've lost the ability to enjoy the stuff that gives us a day-to-day -day purpose. Activities don't necessarily mean these great events that, that, that are planned or prepared. Activities are the day-to-day -day things that make start us off from a base of comfort. So for me, um, getting up in the morning, I like to uh, get my hair done, uh, do my hair. I, I like to have my earrings in. I don't like to go out without my earrings in. I like to make sure my bed is made. I don't like to sit in, the, in, the, in my dining room and do my work if the dishwasher hasn't been loaded, if the kitchen surfaces are all untidy. There are things within us all that make us feel ready and steady to start the day that's safer and, and more comfortable. Having those daily chores helps me feel like I've got an organized mind to start with um, and I'm not in a free fall situation we all know of the days where we've had to jump out of bed because the bin man's coming down the road and we're running out in the street with our slippers on and we're looking a mess and it sets us off agitated or friends turn up and doing the ironing and you're not ready for for them to come it it, it sets off a, a level of agitation that you don't really need um, so I, you know, I, I like to do, do some dog training, tidy the kitchen, check supplies, plan my supper, um, go speak to, to my sister, talk to my kids, send a little message, checking my emails, and planning my next project. That's kind of how my day starts out. These are small activities which, when they're combined, help me to feel and give me a sense of well-being, a sense of purpose. So then I, I urge you to look at the life that that your the people you're looking after has now. And, and your life and and think about how for a start that they that they can be settled to start the day are they do they have a routine are they doing the things that you know make them feel good have they you know my, my dad's in a nursing home right now and, and he if he hasn't got his teeth in he hasn't had a shave if he's not got his hearing aid battery working they make him feel restless and agitated so there are important things each day that um that can start your day more positively. This is, this is where the green layers start to come in. So you're, you're positively moving forward. There's a method in, in, in this madness that I'm talking about, and you might all be thinking, I don't know what she's on about. Um, and when I first uh, started working with the Huntington's Association, I um, got invited to a standard setting workshop and 
in that I got introduced to a system called um, the NAPI system. NAPI stands for um, uh, non-abusive non psychological and physical intervention. And they have this green behavior chart and an escalation chart, which I'm gonna come back to and talk about afterwards. Um, and uh, the NAPI method is used in lots of, of nursing homes and, and care homes and, uh, and in, um, in prisons actually. So anywhere where they've got people who are challenged or, or, uh, or in a challenging environment, um, they will use this system to good effect because it, it looks at the way we can keep people happy before they get to difficult. A lot of uh, nursing homes that I've worked in, they, they will train their staff to manage aggression and, and refocus out of aggression, but I prefer not to wait for that to happen. I prefer to lay the foundation so that never ever occurs. So green behavior um, is, is part of this system and I'm going to give you some examples now. So greening up a situation let, let, I'll just give you a few examples, and then we can talk about things through again at the end. So let's let's say Mary likes flowers. Someone you're looking after likes flowers, and we go and buy them flowers, and and, and uh, go to Florida and buy Mary some flowers. And we put the flowers in a vase for Mary, and she admires them, and then her interest wanes. And thank you very much, but that's very nice. And that's been a brief little thing that you do that um, has given her a moment of greenness. So then what can we do? How can we make that even more interesting? I'm just talking about day-to-day -day stuff. So we'll go back to Mary Likes Flowers. We buy flowers for her, she admires them. We could help Mary to go to the florist and choose the flowers for herself. That might be a way that you can green up this situation. We could help Mary to cut the flowers and arrange the flowers and put them in the vase at home. We could, what next? Oh yeah, uh, help Mary to choose seeds from a seed catalogue, get a seed catalogue out, talk through what her favourite flowers are, um, help her to choose those seeds. We could help Mary then to plant those seeds into little pots and look after them. We could help Mary to tend those plants every day and, and make sure that they're doing okay. And then we could help Mary to plant them in the garden and go and, and check on them and make sure that they're weeded and do, do a little, um, extra bit of activity each day with a focus on this one thing that she likes is flowers and then we could enter her flowers in the town show in a gardening competition and, and at the nursing home that I had we would we, we did grow some flowers and enter them in the in the carnival and it just adds a layer of future worth and anticipation and excitement um that that's one basic one I think we've got Bob, Bob is a petrol head. So he, your husband or, or, or wife might be someone who's always been interested in motorsports. So you're going to watch Top Gear, of course, and you're going to uh, maybe watch the motorsports when they're on. Um, and you're going to maybe take him out for a daily drive at, to, to keep him interested in, in, uh, in that. But, you know, that's, that's all, that's about it. And, and maybe that's, that's as far as you're going and he's still not, not, you're not really getting much at, further than that. So what could we do next? So you could, um, so we're going to, watch TV, we're going to take him out for a drive, we could ask Bob to help us with cleaning the car. Now, when I say these things, you might always say, oh, I couldn't imagine that, how that's going to work. The, the end product is not, is not the purpose of this. It's not, you know, he doesn't have to have it perfectly clean. He, he may only be able to, to sit with you whilst you clean the car. But the point is that you're including him and he's be doing something different than what you were doing before. Um, and he could... Um, hold a chamois or squirt the water at you and it could be a, a very a fun experience so we could get him to help clean in the car or you could take him through a car wash my dad loves a car wash we could ask bob to help uh, with the vehicle checks are the lights working is the what's the oil like what the tire pressures and again I, he may not be physically able to do that but being there with you talking about it with him something that he was always interested in um, is can sometimes be enough enough of a pop of greenness to to ease the tension down and maintain um, contentment. Um, you could ask um, any friends that you had or fellow enthusiasts to visit um, and review the new cars that are on the market, look on the internet. My husband loves looking at the new cars and changing the colours and putting on new tyres and changing the wheel trims. You can spend ages doing that. Um, or look through the latest magazines. I put that in there because friends fall away because visiting can be challenging. Uh, visiting, can, sitting next to someone who doesn't say very much or doesn't do very much can be really, really hard. But if you set up that visit with, or bring along the new car magazine, have some articles to read to him, let's have a look at them together and, and you know, and then they are, have something put that they're prepared to do than just rocking up for a visit. That can be quite difficult. And then you could, of course, oh, 
we could arrange for Bob to be a passenger in a fast track on a fast track day, and that would be something a, a bigger event. And these are the things that now, if you were to say to Bob, "Oh, I'm going to get you in a fast track event," you're probably going to get no. But by having layered those things down over over weeks and weeks and weeks, you're more likely to get a yes out of that. Um, I've put Julia as a homemaker, and this is one that 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 I, I quite see quite a lot. So Julia was a homemaker and looked after her family um, at, at home and her children. And she continues to live at home with her family, um, but she can't do the things that she used to do. And that can be stressful and upsetting for everybody. And what, what could we do? How could we green that up? So um, the, the thing is to consider how much she enjoyed that role, you know, because I, I'm a mother and I have kids and I loved, loved the big family dinners and I loved looking after the house. As much as it was also a chore, that was also what gave me value. So consider how much she enjoyed this role and, and consider what you could do now if you're living at home with somebody. What are you doing in, instinctively now because it's easier, whereas you could include them? And I'm thinking about things like, uh, could Julia scramble eggs in a bowl? Now, you don't have to eat the eggs, but could she be helped to do that? Could she pair socks together in the washing? It doesn't have to be, she might just hold the one sock and wave it around, but she's included and she's taking part in what's going on. She, could she butter bread? You don't have to eat the bread, but could she do that? And it's, it's, it's doing some things that she did before that, will help her to regain some purpose and enjoyment in, in the experience that she's sitting in the, in the family home. Um, the quality, I said, the, the, the quality of, of what, what you're asking that person to do um, is what matters. It's not the end result. You know, it, it's, it's not your, that you're going to eat this cake that she's grabbed all these eggs for. It's just the fact that she's, in, she's joining in. So, so, you, you know, if you're thinking I'll, I'll get them to help me tidy, it might end up not being tidy, but they're helping you to do it. And that's important. And then you just have to tidy up a bit later on. But the, the fact that they're, they're included and that, and that was a big thing that we did at, at the nursing home was was that they were all encouraged to be part of the day to day activities, to be there that, you know, um, folding towels, a basic one, you know, we plonk the towels on someone's lap and fold the towels with them. Um, whether they could fold the towels very well or not didn't matter. They were included and enjoying and the staff were chatting about their, about their homes, their families, their kids, and, and they were included in a family environment. And sometimes when life and the, and the challenges of these, these kind of conditions seep in and overwhelm it's much easier for you to go oh they're asleep they're quiet that's fine I'll get on with doing these jobs but actually putting a bit of time aside and it will be hard to include them in some way we will actually get a more contented and more um, positive experience for that person so I'm going to talk now about the nappy um strategies so here's the nappy tool okay it should be on your screen and you should be able to see it and i'm sure at some point if you wanted it you could print it off um so you'll see there on the left is the um the, the green behaviors that we're talking about and the green behaviors are um what, what, what we what we can separate if you look about what we wrote down at the beginning um being part of a caring community being productive and a higher quality relaxation so being part of a caring community is family is friends it's support groups it's maybe churches are important to you it might be um just being a, a part of a, you know an enthusiast group or a craft lesson lesson that you that you used to go and enjoy productivity is just what you've done each day it means that you can do something like scrambling eggs like putting socks together like listening to the news learning something and doing new things listening to the news reading the paper um writing a letter typing an email recording a message to family speaking to you know um doing something that's productive that you said you wanted to do and you've done and then high quality is food is is drink is touch is sex is massages it's it's the higher quality stuff and if you fill that green side of of life with as much as you can you then don't roll into the amber which is the stress factors here and when somebody starts to get stressed what they're saying is understand where i'm, I'm at understand where you know that, that, that i'm struggling here and 
moving up through that, you see this behavior escalation, okay? And, it, and people, if you think about the people that you're looking after, people that you love, you may recognize the way that this, this progresses. And I certainly saw this very evidently in, in, um, in the, the people that we looked after. I'll give you a little example, so agitated. So, so if, you, if people aren't, if they've got enough green behavior going on, they've got enough stuff going in their lives, they're gonna become stressed and they're going to become escalate in this way. So they're going to become agitated. And agitated for an individual might be pacing, fidgeting, gurning, facial expressions changing, um, an impatience, an intolerance to whatever it is you want them to do. They're going to say no straight away. Um, and they're going to be snappy. And that means I'm unhappy. And that means look after, but take notice of me that, that if you see the second level me message there is I'm distressed. It's saying, pay attention to me for a moment. I'm not very happy. And, um, and you need to do something about this. And if you don't notice that then that person is likely to become disruptive and disruptive is 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 more than pacing pacing is they're keeping them is um, agitated agitated is where they're within themselves they're just restless and fidgeting about and huffing huffing and puffing and a, a lovely lady who used to huff and puff and walk up and down the passage and scratch her neck kept it all to herself but you could see that she was becoming agitated disruptive is when they're slamming doors banging tables making a noise shouting changing the tv channel over and over and over um pushing things out of the way shoving you know but not but not not without the intent to harm without the intent to damage anything just being off oh, get off leave me alone that's disruptive and that's saying pay attention to me you've missed the missed the cue that i am distressed it means pay attention. Um, if you don't pay attention at that point, then you're going to move into destructive. And destructive is where they're breaking things, they're throwing cups, they're they're they're, they're you know being disruptive, then destructive, but don't mean to hurt you. And then if you miss that one, you're going to move on to dangerous. And dangerous is when they are going to be grabbing, pinching, kicking, spitting, um, trying to hurt you. So. You might recognize this. You might see how, how someone that you're looking after moves through um, these uh, strategies, uh, the, these um, stages. And it, I wanted to put this up here for you to understand what they're actually saying. And with my with our staff at, at the nursing home, we, you know, we had 25 individuals with, with Huntington's disease. And so we had to know what each and every one of them's um, descriptors looked like what they were looking like when they were agitated and if and if my staff missed an opportunity there to refocus they're going to get more more um incident reports that are where, where they are displaying some of these disruptive and destructive um behaviors and so refocusing so then if you've got somebody who is who you you can think now oh god yeah they are sitting around fishing in their chair and they are pushing cups over and they are pushing me away it's because they're already agitated and you need to be sprinkling your life with some green activity. Well, I'll, I'll talk about what we did at the nursing home, but uh, you know, bear in mind I had an activity coordinator who could make all these plans for me. So um, you, I, you are going to have to be that person. So, um, so if someone's having a bad day, and you will know, you will if you have ever sat at the end of the end of the bad day and said, "Cool, I knew that that was going to happen," and that's because you've missed that opportunity. When they were agitated, you something about the day you knew they had a funny look in their eye, or they didn't eat their breakfast, or they or they, 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 they didn't bring their washing down like they always did, or or whatever the thing is that you think, oh, that's odd. Oh, it's going to be a bad day. We focus. So when I talked about the the lady that used to pace up and down the passageway, we only had at that point eleven residents and three staff. But if she if if she was doing that, and then I would say to one of my staff, of my precious three take her out for a drive, go, go and get an ice cream. Because if we didn't, then she would whip, whip up that to become destructive and, and, and pinching and punching. And, but taking her out of the mix allowed us to continue with a contented home. And she had something, she was refocused into something nice. And then she came back and she was happy and we didn't have any of the escalation. If we ignored it, then we would get it. And she would, she would smoke too much. She'd get a headache, she'd feel dreadful, she wouldn't eat, you know, it, it, it became a, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. So notice when, when the people that you, that you are, are, um, are looking after become agitated and refocus by doing something green. Now, we offered a lot of organised activities 
we used to go to, we would go uh, trips out to the farms uh, pubs um i took um a, a patient to spain we went to um we went to disneyland paris um hydro pools local hydro pools walking on the malvern hills um sensory rooms um we used that uh, we had a massage therapist come to the home she would do beauty she would do nails she would do massage she would shave the, the gentleman reiki which is lovely and relaxing we had Tai Chi, we had an art therapist that came in every day and helped um, our residents to do wonderful art pieces that we displayed at the local um, events, uh, the poetry festival, etc. Um, we had music groups coming in every day, we did craft sessions. And these guys didn't come in, you know, in a good state. Some of these guys have been on sections and had come to me from, from um, you know, secure units. So they weren't coming in all ready to do these things. We had to lay down this predictable day-to-day -day life for them to re-establish their routines, make them feel like they belonged there, that we were interested in them, that they could help me by coming and, and holding this pile of washing while I'm sorting it out or, or sit there for a minute while I'm writing this, keep me company while I'm writing this report. They were included in what was going on. Um, and they had these healthy notes. So they were I think they would be encouraged to come to the table to have their breakfast. And we weren't just you know, offering them their meals in their rooms. Um, they, they would be part of the meetings and, and the handovers and what was going on. So, so we'd given them that they knew where they belonged, that they could do things and that life was good. So we didn't, then, then we would hit them with, okay, come along now, let, let's, let's join in this music session or let's come along to the Harvest Festival. And, and they would be there and they would enjoy it. Some would walk up and get up and walk out if they wanted to, but the, the, the aim of the game was to keep them not stressed and i'm sure that that's what what you, you you really want to happen at home i can offer you i can tell you a million activities that you could do and i'm sure you've tried them all but if you're getting no when you say anything you, you you've got to look at the the underpinning greenness that's going on in your life at the moment so from this uh, so from like laying down the green activities in the home um we we, we got this willingness to to cooperate and that's called generating cooperation which is um part of the the nappy system so for you at home you you've got some homework to do really um so what is happening each day that, that can be greened up have a think about that um and um are they included in in, in for example in, in what clothes they're going to wear each day or are you just getting out the clothes that, that, that's going to fit and, and stay clean and easy to get off and i get i understand all of that but are you saying while you're choosing it oh i always loved you in that color you always look beautiful in this do you remember we bought that t-shirt when we were on holiday in lanzarote are you in, is it a green experience or has looking after that person become challenging for you and challenging for, for, for the, if I've got care workers here, you know, is this your job and you've got to get the next door to someone else? This interaction can be cleaned up very simply just by including them in that, in, in that experience. Um, are they with you in the kitchen when you're making breakfast? Are they sitting by your side? Are you saying, oh, come and keep me company while I write, while I order this Tesco online order? Do you think we should get this or do you think we should get that? And I, and I get that it's hard if they don't answer you or they, they work, the, but, it, but the fact that you're asking them, can be really enough enough to to uh, green up their experience. Have you got a playlist? Are you playing all your favourite songs and their favourite songs? And are, are you know uh, when when it's a quiet moment? You know, have you got relaxation relaxing music on? Are you dancing? Are you dancing with them or for them in front of them? Are, are you making them smile? We had a lady who. Um, who liked we, we our first home had um, the old bells, the old you know, um, servant call system still on the wall, and she loved the bells, and we used to tinkle them and make her laugh. And she would always, if we, if we said, "Would you like a marmalade sandwich?" She always laughed at that as well. And she would have eight marmalade sandwiches a day. She also loved Christmas uh, catalogues, and so she couldn't engage very well. But if we rang the bells and made her smile and got her a marmalade sandwich and sat her down with the Christmas catalogue she'd flick through that and then she'd go back to her room but in doing that she felt like she was that there was some niceness and, and she belonged and that enabled us to go into her room and clean it because she never let us do that um help to change her clothes if they needed changing she became far more receptive to to um the things that we were doing for her and this was a lady who was who when we got her was living alone at home 
frightened, scared, angry, agoraphobic, all that stuff we talked about in the beginning. She was urinating on her doorstep and throwing her feces into the garden, causing lots of problems with her neighbors. So she wasn't coming in, as I said earlier, ready to do these activities. We had to find them and find the thing that made her smile and find the thing that gave her just a little pop of comfort to reduce the stress to make her and help her be more receptive to care. Um, so, so what I'm saying, you know, this, I'm sure you, it's maybe not what you've logged on to here, but what I'm saying is to find ways to sprinkle some green into the day. Look at your local area. If you are finding it difficult to take someone swimming, let's use that as an example, um, because they are, their mobility is challenging or maybe their behavior is challenging. Look, look to see what, what is available in your area. There may be private pools that you can hire. I went to assess a, a couple, a lovely couple, and, they, and I asked them what was their main problem. And he was, uh, this guy's husband was, was quite disabled actually. His, his mobility was very poor, his speech was quite poor, um, and he was challenging. But the husband said, oh, um, I'm really struggling to get him up to the top diving board in our pool. And that, that was their big problem, you know, and, and, and for, for his husband, that was really important for him. So we looked at the smaller pools and places that, that, that they could go and that they could, he could still enjoy doing that without losing it and without it becoming a problem. So there will be things in your area that you could access. You could speak to um, uh, 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 theatres or cinemas if they have a, a, a session where um, people that are challenged can go. They, I know that there's a lot, lot of movement now for the autistic children that um, theme parks are opening on quieter days and. Um, and there are, are, I know that a lot of the theatres are doing that too. So have a look at what, what they did like or what you would like to do and see what can be fashioned to, to fit the needs of the person that you're looking after. Um, find out what time is quieter in the, the local shops if you want, you know, if you haven't been taking your the person that you love to the shops because they might be disturbed by the noise or the racket. Find out what, what, what works in that way. Um, are there any day centres near you that, that have music acts that go? Could you join in with that? Is there nursing homes near you that have, have some therapy sessions that you could join in with? Can you ring up and find out? Because other activities outside of the home, once you've done some green stuff inside that they're more willing to go outside, will, will be more uh, reassuring for that person and, that, that, and you will get a better response generally for that. Um, I had a gentleman who had, whose wife was very difficult, very challenging, perseveration, perseveration, perseveration. This was the lady who wanted to watch Die Hard. And they and he could he was working from home and he couldn't work because she was shouting and um and calling out all the time and it was causing them a lot of stress, had no help at home, didn't want any help at home. Um, but if we look back at the the behavior chart that we talked about, her her saying, I want to watch Die Hard wasn't green behavior it was actually saying i'm agitated please don't leave me on my own please let me be by your side don't don't leave me here but watching television even though that's what she was saying so eventually he was persuaded to accept carers in the morning and he went out booked a hot desk and, you know and went out to work and he um and the fact you know sometimes we think that no one can look after them as well as we as we do and that's probably true i'm gonna stop sharing actually um that's probably true however variety is far better and they, it might be that they're challenging at first but to have someone else come in and help you and be there for that person gives that person something else to talk about something else to look at and that uh, actually is quite helpful even though they might not think they want it or you might not think they want it it can be really helpful so that eventually this this chap had carers in all day he was able to go to work when he got back they it was lovely and he was able to keep his wife at home with him for far longer than he thought so what, what what's available around you what what works for you what doesn't sprinkling everything and making it green and just by the, your language if you're saying do you want to go to the shops and they're saying no then look at your language and maybe try saying, come and help me, come and keep me company, come and be with me. It's a more inclusive thing. If you say, what do you want to do today? And they don't know, they don't know. But by being inclusive, you, 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 you could then generate cooperation far more easily. Someone is going to want to help you. If there's any um, salesman out there, you'll understand the, the getting someone on a roll of yeses. And that's always a good thing to do also. 
So it's um, getting things you know you're going to get yes for before you have the Bob big thing that we've got to go to the doctor's for an appointment or whatever. Um, and that is, we, we used to do that by, would you like a sandwich? Yes. Can I take your plate? Yes. Would you like another coffee? Yes. And you get as many yeses as you can in this experience so that when you say, right now I want to um, change that dirty jumper or I want, you know, we, we have to go out now to the dentist, you, you're going to get a yes because they want a roll of yeses. Whereas if you start with, we've got a dentist today and they say no, you're never going to get them out the door, are you? you? You will all know that too. So think about your language. Think about um, inclusion in whatever it is you're doing, just even if they're just sitting next to you while you're doing it. Um, and then you are more likely to be able to say, I've got to go and do this thing this afternoon. Are you all right with your neighbour coming around for a while? You are going, you're going to get a more contented person. Um, Oh, have I got else written down here? Oh, I, I, got, I can go on. I've got loads of loads of ideas. And as I said at the beginning, uh, we had an activity coordinator and you are going to have to be that person. And so thinking of things that were interesting for you and the person that you're looking after, um, uh, Indian Indian food. Uh, um, you could have an Indian day. You could listen to Bangra music on the on the radio or, you know, on um on Spotify, you could uh, watch a, an Indian film or the best Marigold Hotel or something like that. You could cook an Indian meal and you could let and smell the spices and 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 get them involved in in chopping or or stirring, you know, as best you can. But if you needed to have some inspiration, think of themes that were interesting. My husband likes the moon, um, and so we, you know, I, for Christmas I bought him a, a little moon and, and a book on the moonshot, and we watched a film about the moon. You know, it's it. Theming it up can make it green as well by by pushing it forward. Scrapbooks um, is quite is quite a good thing. Going through old photos, putting them all together, making memories for for family members, getting things written down with that person next to you, even if they can't communicate, is a really good way of consolidating a life, reminding someone of how important they were to you and and how important they were you know, they were in their life their role, uh, whatever that might be, um, and how, how, uh, what value they were. It's, it's really a beautiful green behaviour um, and a, an intimate one. Um, can you get a beautician to come to your home to do massage? Will they come and do nails? Um, that's, as I say, touch, being beautiful, being being well presented is really important and that can easily fall away, um, certainly with, with some of the conditions that, that we've looked after. But it's important and our beauty, our, our beauty therapist was one of the most popular members of staff that we had because she'd come in every day and she would shave them, and massage them and do their nails. And, you know, trying to do nails for somebody with current movement is quite difficult, um, but she did a really good job and, that, and they loved her. Um, uh, I had a lady who was who was at nearing end of life, and I used to sit with her, and um, and that, and that that's hard. Again, going back to if you have friends, and invite your friends round. If they've fallen away, invite them back. They will be reluctant to come because they won't know what to say or do. Um, and so with with my lady, I we start. She was, used to love horses, so I started reading Jilly Cooper, um, and it was all very saucy, and we had a good giggle, like we would have done if we were girlfriends out in the pub. And and I go, oh blimey, stuff, this is a bit, it's a bit racy, and we would laugh about it. So having a purpose, doing something that they connect to, can it can be enough, like. My, my lady's bells and the my, my lady's sandwiches. It can be enough. We tend to think. That they've done nothing all day by because we haven't been and done a big thing but some of these smaller green things are enough to, to create contentment and enough to to keep you on that scale of 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 happiness and not stressed